everyone, this is a beginner's guide on solo Nex and using ranged only and banking every kill. So Nex is a higher tier boss and you could easily die if you did not know the mechanics. Nex has 200k life points with a combat level of 1001. She is aggressive and poisonous. Her max hit is 4000 and her special hit can hit up to 8000. Also she has no weaknesses, so for this reason I would recommend at least tier 80 weapons and armour minimum. Although if you do have tier 90 that would be a lot better. 19 combat stats such as range, defence and HP. 95 prayer for anguish so make sure to complete the Temple of Senestine quest to unlock the curses. 67 summoning for a war tortoise. You can also use a yak if your summoning level is high enough. However, if you start to feel comfortable enough I'd recommend bringing a shadow on a hill. 96 herb law for overloads or 91 boosted to make overloads. Ok so to reach next there are a few requirements that need to be met. You will need a frozen key. Now the frozen key pieces are dropped by any follower within the each god's camp inside the god wars dungeon. There are 4 frozen key pieces, one for armadil, bandos, saradomin and zamorak. If all of these 4 pieces are combined they will become a frozen key which then is used to open the door to the ancient prison. You will also need a set of ancient ceremonial. Now the reason for this is because it allows you to skip the next kill count. It can be purchased on the grand exchange or dropped by next. I would also recommend bringing along some GP like around 800k to make the instance. Now the reason why is because when you make your own instance it will allow next to spawn much faster which means more kills equals more GP. Ok so if you are maxed or you do have access to the PVM hub portal you can just skip this part but for those of you who don't you will need either 60 strength or 60 agility to cross the rock to access the god wars 1 dungeon. Ok so once again if you do not have access to the max skill boss portal or the pvm portal you will need to complete the quest Edgar's Ruse for the Trollheim teleport which will bring you closer to the God Wars 1 dungeon. The Temple of Senestine quest, now this is another quest I would 100% say it's required because if you want to learn to solo next you're going to need to unlock curses. Ok next we have the sharpshooter aura or the reckless aura. Now you'll need either of these auras. For a beginner I would definitely recommend the supreme sharpshooter aura and slowly wean in reckless because then you can adjust to taking more damage than usual. So make sure you have one of these auras ready to activate. Here is a list of some useful items you can bring along with you. Now a defender can come in handy during ice phase as it can block damage and could possibly save your life. As you can see I've also listed the max boss portal or the pvm hub portal. Now the reason for this is because it's useful for faster kills and faster banking. If you are using extensions I would also recommend bringing some backing bolts such as ruby e and diamond e as it can help for extra dps or accuracy. Now the stone of jazz buff, this gives an extra 5% damage boost for all the bosses in the god wars 1 apart from the next angel of death. The fairy ring code is dkq. The Enhanced Excalibur, you get free heals every 5 minutes. Now the best time to activate this sword is when you have activated the Onslaught ability on Blood Phase. Ogre Flask, awesome for boosting your health points and curing poison. The Fire Making Life Point Boost, now what you do with this is you burn the highest logs you can to increase your health and that will last a certain amount of time depending on your fire making level. Onslaught. This will get you through Blood Phase if you are finding it hard to get it down during that time. The Onslaught ability can be purchased via the Grand Exchange as a Maz Capability Codex. Now, I've also put on there Adrenaline and Replenishment Pots. Once again, this pot could technically save your life if you're low on Adrenaline and you are on Ice Phase. You can simply use Freedom, Sip the Pot and Barricade. On this page, I've prepared two example presets. One that you use before you go to next and another one that you use when you arrive at the next lobby. You are more than welcome to use these presets, however they are example presets so to clarify others may have different presets compared to this one that include using superior void and such. Ok so for the next part of the video I'm going to be talking for quite a while for those of you who would like to use the same presets, however if you don't just skip to the next part. So preset 1 contains the items to get to next as well as the items I used before going into the fight. I have my frozen key, my ancient ceremonial, my trollheim teleport spell my Zaros shard and some food if needed. There's also an option on familiars depending on if I want to use a yak or a hill on that day. Proteon logs for my bonfire boost, you can bring like 6 to 5 logs instead if you don't have any proteons. Also I have a portable fairy ring which will teleport me to the glacies cavern for my stone of jazz boost. If you don't have one you can just teleport to Yano. there's a fairy ring really close there. 
Okay, so for preset 2, when I reach the next lobby, I switch to this preset and spawn my familiar with food. I'm wearing my augmented Sirenic armor, elite range of boots, nightmare gauntlets, and hybrid cape. For my weapons, I'm using extensions with backy bolts, Ruby E for those high hits. In my Scrimshaw slot, I'm using Cruelty of Scrimshaw for the extra damage. Now you can feel free to use a guard book to your liking instead. In my necklace slot, I'm using the Amulet of Souls or for the extra prayer protection. My comp cape for the hybrid stats. In my ring slot, I'm wearing the Ring of Death, which is imbued just in case something goes wrong, as well as for the stats. You don't have to bring the same ring, feel free to change stuff to your liking, or if you don't have the ring, just bring your look at dwarves. In my preset 2 inventory, I have my shield with me because I don't really care about taking a hit or two. But for a beginner, it can be overwhelming. So I would recommend a defender instead because they do have a plus 3% accuracy boost and a 1 in 15 chance to decrease the damage taken from a hit by 50 to 100% which also increases the player's accuracy for the next attack by 20%. So yeah, a defender could save you. I also have my Bandos boots and my Malev helm to switch for Shadow Phase, although I did find it better to switch to the Melee gear on Smoke Phase just before you go into Shadow Phase. Now the motive for wearing two melee items and a hybrid cape is to stop Nex from hitting you in melee distance on Shadow Phase, so your melee defense needs to be equal or higher than your ranged defense for it to work. I also have my 1 Overload, 3 Prayer Renewals pots because Nex loves to drain your prayer, an Adrenaline Potion and Anti-Poison. Then I have my Enhanced Excalibur and Magic Note Paper for the Sarabru drops and Super Restore drops. Those are really good minis so you want to make sure that you do note them up. I also brought my Look of Dwarves to switch at the end on Zaros Phase, a couple of Saradomin Brews and lots of Rock Tails. Now the Saradomin really do help if your HP needs a boost up without consuming any Adrenaline or if you do get into trouble you can sip a brew and eat a rock tail on the same tick. So now that I'm done explaining presets, let's move on to the perks that are useful at soloing necks. So here is a list of perks that are useful for soloing necks. Now these are for you to decide what you want to have, but they have really helped me out. So we have Aftershock 3, Mobile which is good for moving faster around the arena, Turtle in 3 you can put on your defender, Turtle in 3 actually increases duration and cooldown of barricade. Crystal Shield 3, now this is a really good perk to have, so for those of you who don't know what it does, when Crystal Shield activates it will keep track of how much damage you take for 10 seconds, adding it to a pool of life points, then for 30 seconds after that, any damage you receive will be subtracted from this pool instead of your actual life points. Enhanced Devoted 3, now this perk is another great one, it has a chance on each hit of replicating the devotion ability for 3 seconds. The perk does not put the ability itself on cooldown, however this perk takes up to 2 slots lots in a gizmo, meaning it cannot be paired with any other perk in the same gizmo. Impatient 3. Now this perk is pretty awesome too, it's a 9% chance per rank for basic abilities to generate 3% extra adren. Next we have Crackling 3. Now I know some prefer not to use this at next, just in case it goes off on blood phase and it heals her. At this point it's related to chance so this one is entirely your personal preference. Now I've also listed Precise 5, now this perk is a must on your weapon. Now this perk increases your minimum damage by 1.5% per rank of your maximum damage, so it's very important to have this perk on your weapon. And finally we have Venom Blood. Now this is your choice as well, this will stop next poisoning you on smoke phase, so if you decide to use this it will basically save your slot for either one more Sarabru or an extra Rock Tail. Now bear in mind, these are only the main perks I have picked out that I have used and have helped me with solo next. There are other perks out there such as absorbative etc, so be sure to pick the right perks for yourself. Okay so now showing on the screen is how you can get there. For those of you who are maxed or have the PVM hub portal, you can skip to the next part. <laughs>
now that we have arrived at Nexus lobby, we can use the bank that's right there so you can change your preset, spawn a familiar of whichever familiar you want to be using and do your bonfire boost. Okay, so there are five phases in the fight. Smoke phase where you protect mage, shadow phase where you protect range, blood phase where you protect mage, ice phase where you protect mage and finally Zaros phase where you protect mage. Now I'll be going into depth on each of these phases later in the video. Okay, so moving on to Nexus Arena. Now I know it looks confusing, but I will try my best to make it look and sound as simple as I can throughout the video. So now, looking at the map on the screen, you can see there are four minions. We have Fumus, Umbra, Cura and Glacies. Now I've put an arrow when Nex spawns so you know to keep out of the middle area. You're going to want to tag Nex and drag her out of the middle to the southwest corner, just like this. So the rotation is, tag Fumus when he spawns, drink an adrenaline pot, use escape or surge, then resonance, then preparation, then freedom and finally anticipation. Now always leave anticipation till the end, just as Nex has finished calling out all of the minions to avoid being magically dragged in by her. Okay, so let's talk about smoke phase. It's a pretty simple phase. The attack rotation on this particular phase is virus, 5 auto attacks, no escape, 5 auto attacks again and then repeats. So the first special attack on smoke phase is let the virus flow through you. So with this special attack, Nex will give a virus to a player, causing them to get poisoned. The player's combat stats are then quickly drained every time they say cough. Now how to deal with this attack? Simply use anti-poison to avoid being infected. It's that simple. Her next special attack, she will then say, there is no escape. What happens if you are standing by the middle, you can get hit for 5k typeless damage and she can turn off your prayers. You can usually ignore this attack and continue to DPS, however the only time this gets dangerous is if you are magically dragged by her towards the middle of the arena. How to deal with this attack? Stay away from the middle of the arena and it won't affect you. Magical Drag Now here is another attack that really isn't part of her rotation, just see it as an additional one. Now this attack can happen only in phase 1 and can happen any time repeatedly. Next can drag a player towards her, stun and bind them for 3 seconds and remove their protection prayers. How to deal with this attack? If you get magically dragged, use freedom, move away and put your prayer back on. To avoid being magically dragged, use anticipation as much as you can on P1. Now the reason I recommend using anticipation is that being magically dragged is a DPS drain as well as a food drain and may even lead to death if combined with her there is no escape attack so it's better to prevent the attack than to cure it. Okay, so once she reaches 160k life points, Fumus can be attacked. The shadow phase will not start until Fumus has been killed and Nex has been successfully attacked. So just a little tip before we go into shadow phase mechanics. Now the special attack at the start of the shadow phase is actually decided by the last special attack used in smoke phase. So during shadow phase, there is a gap of 4 auto attacks before Nex performs a special attack. If she's phased on, let the virus flow through you, she starts with embrace the darkness, 4 auto attacks, shadow traps and then repeats. However, if she's phased on, there is no escape, she starts with shadow traps, darkness, shadow traps, 4 auto attacks and repeats. The rotation for shadow phase is shadow traps, if Nex end smoke phase last used, there is no escape, then it's darkness, 5 auto attacks and then shadow traps again. Okay, so here are the mechanics for Shadow Phase, in no particular order. She will say, Fear the Shadow. This is where Shadow Traps will appear under you. After two ticks, any player standing on them will take 50% of their health as damage. How to avoid this attack? Look out for her saying, Fear the Shadow above her head, or turn the volume up as you can literally hear her saying it. Once you see the warning, move off the Shadow Trap right away. You can literally take one step to the side and continue to DPS. Her other special attack on Shadow Phase is called Embrace Darkness. Nex will darken the room within 15 spaces of her. The closer you are to Nex, the darker the room will be. If you are within melee range of Nex for at least 5 seconds, you will receive a message saying the shadows start to engulf you and you will take up to 400 to 700 damage per tick rapidly. How to avoid this attack? Move away from Nex until she is not melee distance of you. However, the melee boots and the melee helm I suggested at the start will really help you here as it stops Nex from reaching you in melee distance. So you can really focus on DPSing her down and watching out for the shadow traps. 
Moving on to phase 3, which is blood phase. So blood phase is tough as it's more of a DPS race. It may take you a few tries, but if you onslaught, your chances are much higher. On blood phase, make sure you do not use any bleeds as they will only heal her. So attack rotation on this phase will be Siphon Summon, 3 auto attacks, Blood Sacrifice, 3 auto attacks again, and then she repeats. Her special abilities in this phase are, a Siphon will solve this. Next we'll summon 2 Blood Reavers and then raise her wings into the air. If you hit her while she's doing this animation, any damage dealt will instantly heal her for the same amount. Next Blood Reavers will also heal her, so if next uses the special again, any remaining Blood Reavers from the previous summon will die and heal her for the health they had remaining. How to deal with this attack? A message above her head will display, a siphon will solve this, and she will raise her wings into the air. As soon as her wings go down, you can hit her. Also make sure that you have full adrenaline at this part after killing Umbra. Make sure also that your auto retaliate is off as well. Her next special attack on blood phase is I demand a blood sacrifice. Next will target you and you will glow red and she will heal equal to your max health while damaging you for 10% of your max health within 5 seconds. How to deal with this attack. So when Nex uses this attack, you surge or escape. You need to be at least 7 squares away from Nex to stop her from stealing your life points. Okay, so once Nex life points have reached 80k, Cura can be attacked. Ice phase will not start until Cura has been killed and Nex has been successfully attacked. Next we have phase 4, which is the ice phase. At the start of the ice phase, she can do either of her two special attacks. Die now in a prison of ice or contain this, depending on what special attack she was last phased on. If her last special attack on blood phase was I demand a blood sacrifice, she will start with the contain this. However, if her last special attack on blood phase was a siphon will solve this, she will start with a die now in prison of ice. Next is attack rotation for this particular phase is first special attack based on the phase start, then three auto attacks then a second special attack based on the phase start, three auto attacks and then she repeats. Okay, so her special attack in no particular order is die now in a prison of ice. Next will literally freeze you using an ice attack while stunning you and turning off any protection or deflection prayers. If you are stuck in the ice prison and you haven't used any defensive abilities, you will be hit for around 6 to 8k typeless damage. How to avoid this special attack? At the start of this phase, make sure you have full life points. So for the beginners, I would recommend while you are in the ice prison, you can use freedom and barricade, and that will negate all of the damage, but you do lose adrenaline. However, if she ice prisons you again, use anticipation after it contained this attack, and then use resonance. The reso isn't used to negate the damage from the ice prison, but from the next attack from next. Or if you're feeling brave, you can tank it. Although don't forget to eat up to full health if you decide to tank it. Her next special attack on this phase is Contain This. Next will spawn a barrier of ice around her. If you get caught in this ice barrier, you can take up to 3.5k damage, as well as being stunned for a few seconds and removing your prayer and curses off. How to deal with this special attack? On this phase, you're going to want to keep an eye on all the messages above her head, so you can prepare yourself for your next move. You're going to want to look out for a message above her head that says, Contain this. As soon as you see that message, move away from her and make sure there is a large distance between you both, just in case she charges at you while she's doing this special. If she happens to charge at you, quickly run away or use surge or escape. Okay, so the final phase is Aros. This phase is pretty easy and more chilled. Her attack rotation for this phase is Soul Split, 3 auto attacks, Deflect Melee, 3 auto attacks, no overhead curse, 3 auto attacks and then she repeats. However, if next uses Deflect Range or Deflect Mage, she only performs her auto attacks until she stops protecting. More upon the start of this phase, Nex also activates turmoil yelling now the power of Zaros and she will heal herself for 33,000 so her health will boost up to about 73.33. Nex also has a cap on this phase that reduces damage above 2000 by 75%. Next, we'll also use Soul Split on Zaros' face. She will heal 2.5k life points for every time she hits you regardless of the damage she deals. When Next activates Tormoil, her attacks can drain your combat stats by like 2 levels. Also on Zaros' face, Next magic attacks deals way more damage so make sure that you are protecting Mage, otherwise you can be hit up to 5.5k. And finally, her last special attack on this phase, she will use Wrath. 
Next will yell, taste my wrath, dealing around 4k damage to players within a 5x5 radius of Nex. For the next part of the video, I'll put in a full kill of the actual fight, so you awesome peeps can see what it's like. I hope you all enjoyed my solo next guide for beginners using range. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Other than that, if you like the guide, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.